Welcome to the program. My guests there, Don Parenti, the Assistant Vice President of Technical Sales, Global Technology Office for AT&T Public Sector. Don, welcome to the program. Thanks, Jason. Gary Langston, the Director of Strategy and Solutions for AT&T Public Sector. Gary, welcome to the discussion. Thank you. And Carl Teagan, the Assistant Vice President for Defense Segment for AT&T Public Sector. Carl, welcome to, as well. Good to be here, Jason. The federal government for the last, if you will, umpteen years, it feels like, has been really focused on IT modernization. L let me start with Carl a little bit. The, the Army specifically has been going down a path. I've had the, the opportunity to talk with the Army G CIO G6 uh, General Crawford, and a lot of what he talked about was not just moving to the cloud, but app rationalization. Just set the stage. Where is IT modernization today, and where is it heading from an Army perspective? The Army has been uh, building its own networks for a number of years, and they've kind of reached the conclusion that they can't scale and can't keep up with the modernization that's taking place commercially. So the commercial world is rolling out new technologies at a far faster pace, and uh, the Army is now looking at doing things as a service so that they can keep pace with the uh, developments in the commercial world. And this is a big difference for the Army. What has changed for the Army? So what's changed is the Army uh, has come to realize that it, it just cannot keep up. It's, it cannot develop and deploy its own networks at a pace that uh, this commercial world does. And they've got many, many networks that have seams between them, and so they have difficulty uh, collapsing those networks together. It starts with mission effectiveness. It, it starts with the network and the IT systems being part of the solution for the warfighter. It's not just about program management. So in, so in any classical acquisition program, you have this make versus buy decision or build, if you will. And so there are things that the, that the Army and the Department of Defense absolutely need to make because they're military unique, but there are many things that can be, that can be bought as a service and, and do so in a way that's more secure, uh, more reliable, and more responsive to the warfighter. One of the key phrases we see time and again is this idea of purpose-built networks. And it's interesting when you do a little bit of research around what is it and why is it important. There's definitely people who believe different views of, you know, keep them or get rid of them. The Army seems to be trying to get away from that purpose-built network structure. Yeah, that's right. But by, by having a shared infrastructure that meets the needs of those, of those purposes, those, mis those mission applications, there's a, there's a lot of commonality in, in modern networks that, that, that can be shared. And, and let me bring in Don for a second as well, because that commonality is what's driving this. I think it comes down to like an economies of scale, right? In, in the past, you built a network for one specific application. But when we start talking about modernization, you're talking about bringing in new applications, um, moving to the cloud, hosted services, even look at voice. It's gone from you know a, something that was very, very specific to a network to something that's uh, really a, an IP-based server uh, application on the network. So when you, when you start looking at how do I serve everything I want to do from a modernization point of view, you want to do it on one consolidated network. And it's got to be obviously highly reliable, high-performing, uh, and extremely scalable. You know, like Carl was saying before, it's, uh, it's, it, we're at the point right now that if you want to get to modernization, you got to start from the bottom and build up. And the bottom is, is starting with the network. It's the enabler for modernization. You can't have it without the network.